Canon EOS R7 Review The Canon EOS R7 is a high-end cropped frame mirrorless camera with a 32-megapixel APS-C sensor, 4.6-type video, and built-in stabilization. Announced in May 2022, Canon calls the R7 their ultimate APS-C camera. And while not officially a successor to the 7D Mark Roman II DSLR, the single-digit name leaves no doubt where it's positioned. This is a robust and fast camera that aims to satisfy demanding sports and wildlife photographers, and one Canon also hopes will convert the 7D Roman II faithful to the world of mirrorless. Like Canon's previous high-end cropped bodies, it also provides an alternative to full-frame models without skimping on handling or features. My review was made with a final production R7, and as always I've out everything into the video below, which concentrates on the quality and performance from a photography perspective. Meanwhile, if you prefer the reader written version of the highlights, keep scrolling. Note I plan to make a second video about the video capabilities, which I'll add to here later. My review also includes comparisons with Fujifilm's X-H2 and X-H2S, which also target the high-end APS-C market with the X-H2 costing around 50% more, and the S version weighing in at about a grand more than the R7, they're comfortably more expensive, but include a raft of higher end specs, which many hoped Canon would include for a mirrorless 7D Roman II. Let's start by looking at Canon's system as a whole. The EOS R7 on the right was launched alongside the lower end and more affordable R10 on the left. A new series of mirrorless cameras and lenses designed for smaller cropped frame APS-C sensors. RF-S bodies and lenses share the same mount as full frame RF models, so you can fit any RF lens without an adapter, albeit with their field of view crop by 1.6 times due to the smaller sensor, or indeed vice versa, with RF-S lenses also working on full frame EOS R bodies, albeit in a 1.6 cropped mode as they are not designed to cover their larger sensors. At the time of making this review, Canon had only launched two RFS lenses, both fairly standard kit zooms, and while the R7 can use any full-frame RF lens without an adapter, the better models are quite expensive and hefty, and there's still some gaps in the series to fill. Unlike Sony's more established E-mount, there's not yet any third-party lenses for Canon's EOS R mirrorless cameras. Fujifilm's X-mount is also well-established with lots of lens options, including several big guns to tempt wildlife photographers. In the meantime, EOS R7 owners can adapt any of the older EF or EFS DSLR lenses from Canon or third parties, and on the whole these can work pretty well. Exploiting the built-in stabilization and broad AF coverage with subject recognition. There are, however, a number of caveats with some. Typically older EF lenses, unable to work at the top burst speeds, combine optical IS with IBIS, or support full AF coverage. Your first port of call should be CamStart, Canon where you'll find supplemental information on their products, which go beyond the user guides. Here's a table showing which lenses support the R7's fastest burst speeds, and while you will find some big zooms and super tellies beloved of wildlife photographers, including the EF 500 f 4 and EF 100 400. They're the most recent Mark Roman II versions. This means the older Mark and models typically shoot at slower burst speeds on the R7. It seems to be the electronic bursts that suffer the most, typically running at roughly half the top third of speed. But 10 15 may still be good enough and will eke out the buffer longer too. If you are hoping to adapt an older EF tele for wildlife photography, I'd strongly recommend checking out Dewey Patton and Johnny Pink's channels where they both have some really useful videos. And while there can be limitations, they both show some great looking images with older lenses. I've popped links in the description. If you are adapting EF lenses, one of the more intriguing options is to use Canon's EF EOS R0.71 accessory launch for the C70 cinema camera. This works like a speed booster essentially squeezing the light-gathering goodness of a full-frame lens onto the smaller crop sensor area while roughly maintaining its coverage.